Hello folks, hope you're all doing well. It is a lovely day, or am I kidding you? If you have a look behind us, the world is about to end if you look that way. So I'm trying to get this video in nice and quick before the rain comes, because it's only a matter of time before it absolutely starts tipping it down here. Anyway, I think I said in the last sort of tour that I did, it was around about a couple of months ago, sometime in March I think I did it, that we'll do one of these every sort of two to three months just to show you how things are coming along. So I think it's about that time to have a look about, because I've done some jobs off camera, I don't film everything, I've done a few bits and pieces here and there, so we'll have a bit of a look around. We'll, we'll head down the right hand side first of all, look what's going on there, we'll dive into the polytunnel, spin round in there, come back out and then head down to the side and we'll see how everything is looking. Anyway, without further ado, what I'll do is I'll spin you around and we'll have a look here first of all. Right, so where should we start? Two apple trees. So a wee while ago I put these two apple trees out over here. We've got one here and one over there. They are doing fine. You can see the leaves have come on them now. So they're going great guns. Still going to be quite a while before we get any fruit off them. But they're looking okay. Over here we've got the what I can only describe as mess of raspberries. So there's a big old stramash of raspberries going on all there and I desperately need to get in and about that area and sort it out because you can see there's all sorts of long grass and stuff getting matted all and about it. It's all turning into a bit of a mess. So that needs sorting out. But in there, in some good news, We've got all the first early potato buckets here and they're looking absolutely brilliant. One of the varieties is Swift and off the top of my head I don't quite remember what the other variety is but the three buckets down the far end there that you can see, I can see there's little flowers just starting to come on there so they're going absolutely great guns. If we move around here just a little bit we move into the start of the onions. These are the onion sets that we're using and I wish I could tell you what the variety is but I can't remember and despite my resolution to label everything there's no label in there so I don't know what I've done with it but they're looking okay which is the important thing. Let's move on just a little bit down here and these are the Kelsey onions. We bought these as little plug plants and apologies for my, uh, my shadow casting across the screen there. The sun is still shining just for now but these these were okay they took a little while to get going but they're going now so hopefully they'll grow absolutely massive again by the end of the year we'll we'll see and over here right in this very end bed we've got the zebrun shallots they were grown from seed they're looking great as well going great guns and there's even a stray raspberry in there as well look at that we'll have to do something about that and hanging out at the end of this row is our big old pile of comfrey. So I'm still in the process of sorting, cut that back at the moment to make comfrey tea. I've done a video on that recently. I'll pop a little link up at the top there if you want to go and see it. It's just starting to flower and I'll, I'll keep some of it there flowering because the bees absolutely adore it. And moving along this way, we've got the rhubarb bed over there. That's going absolutely great guns as well. We've got some lovely looking rhubarb in there. And it's looking absolutely delicious. We've had loads of pickings off it so far, and there's even more pickings to come. And I just saw a thing in a in a local group that I'm in here in Linlithgow about one of the the local breweries. Go and check it out, Strangers Brewing. I'll pop a link to the to the website in the description there. Where Brett, the guy who runs it and owns it, is going to make a rhubarb saison beer. So he's after some rhubarb. So we're going to give him some of ours for a, a couple of cans of beer in return. So I think that's a pretty good deal spinning around here yeah. this is the first of the main crop potato beds and as you can see they've all sort of started poking their heads up which is great they're going nice and well now at the moment as are these ones here just the one row of main crops in this bed swiftly followed by a row of bed fresher champion onions and again they were ones grown from seed and not set and they look decent so it'll be an interesting comparison towards the end of the year just to see how the ones from seed do compared to if we come down here this bed here where all the ones in here are grown from set and this is a new technique we're trying where it's grown through the through the plastic to try and keep the weeds down you know a little bit more sort of low maintenance so we'll see how they get on as well moving along we've got two empty beds i've got a load of brassicas that are going to come out into this bed and the bed next to it anytime in the next couple of weeks and uh, what do we have here a stray bucket of potatoes hiding here and this one is thankfully has a label in it these are the charlottes these were a good few weeks later than all the others and you can see just starting to sort of poke the heads up there now 
And moving on to these ones on top of the pallet here. These are one, two, three, four, five, six buckets here. And these are for the single seed potato challenge, which is being run by our friend Steve at the Digwell Green Fingers channel. By all means, go and check it out. Have a look at the, the competition, see how it's going on. But hopefully come sort of September, October time, we'll find out who's, who's won that one when all these get turfed out the buckets. Let's quickly spin round in here. Nothing much to... Actually, let's, let's go back around this way. We've got this bit over here. Let's talk about this bit. It's a bit of a mess. The, the pond that never seems to get done is going to go in the corner there. And this bit here, where this pallet is, I've decided the sweet corn's going to go there. So that's only just sort of shot up now. So I've got a couple of weeks just to sort this bit out here. Once that's sorted, we'll get the sweet corn out and about. Into the polytunnel. Right, first of all, on the left here, we've got the sweet peppers. And that is a variety called King of the North. They're looking pretty decent. Then we move on to the, to, to the tomatoes. And we've got six plants in this section here. The three at the back are sun gold, and the three at the front are large barred ball. All looking nice and healthy. Moving on to the back here, nothing here just yet. Bit of a gap. I'll get another three, I reckon, for the halo pots in there. And I think that's where I'm going to put at least two aubergines. I might put three. I think I'll probably stick with two because the plants get massive. And I might put another another sweet pepper in there at the back. Possibly, we'll see, we'll see. I'm still still thinking about that one. Scooting over to this side, and these two back here are the chili plants. The one on the left is called Chocolate Dula, and the one on the right is ooh, Orange Habanero Big Sun. Orange Habanero Big Sun. And they're looking okay as well. These two here, it's another two King of the North sweet peppers. And I'm just thinking while I'm while I'm stood here doing this in the polytunnel, it's absolutely roasting. And looking at the little temperature gauge here, I don't know if you can quite see it, but the temperature at the moment in here is 33 and a half degrees. So it's pretty blooming warm. <laughs> and down here, what have we got on this tray? We've got one of the King of the North peppers. This is a little one, it's never really grown very well. I feel a bit sorry for it. So I'm hoping it's gonna grow a bit more now. It's got loads of space, so we'll see how it gets on. And this year, it, it, it looks a little bit sad at the moment, but that was one of the suckers off the sun gold tomato plant there that's been planted. And as soon as the roots come out, that'll spring into life and it'll look 10 times better in about a week or two's time. This here is another chili plant. This is called Basket Fire. This isn't actually going to stay in the polytunnel long term. This will go in a pot and it'll go outside, but you can see there's loads and loads of little chili starting up here behind the fi fi fires, behind the flowers there. So hopefully that'll look absolutely fab once it's outside and in full flow. These here are some outdoor tomato plants. They're not quite ready to go out yet. I want them to be just a little bit bigger before they move out the polytunnel, probably into one of the two new raised beds that we've got outside. Over here, the cucumbers that I've put in, some different varieties here and I, I grow these, these up canes I prefer cucumbers on canes like this as opposed to using the sort of string system that we use on the other side this variety if I can poke my finger over this one here this is Carmen F1 this one here is mini munch and I'll show you the mini munch look there we go lovely little cucumbers growing on that one already and the two at the back there that you can see they are Armenian yard long cucumbers which is a new variety from America a bit of an experiment for us to see how or if they grow this year but really keen to see the fruit coming on them and how they grow but we'll see we'll see time will tell let's move on and have a little bit of a peek outside round here what's going on in this bit so this is the garlic. This has been in over winter and it's looking absolutely brilliant. Still, you're still talking, what is it now? Middle of May, you're still talking a good, at least six weeks, two months, maybe it's even a bit longer before that's going to be ready. Looking in behind it, this is or was purple sprouting broccoli. It's finished with now for the season. It's done. I've not pulled it out yet because these little yellow flowers, again, the bees go absolutely mad for them. So I'm leaving that there until the new purple sprouting broccoli is big enough, ready to go in this bed when I pull all that out. Empty bed at the back here, needs a little bit of TLC with the weeds pulling out of it. Bit of fresh compost on the top and the cause jets will be going in there sometime in the next two to three weeks. That'll be done. Bed over here, this is where I did the carrots if you remember there was a, a video on that let me just lift the lid on these and you can see hopefully you can see 
that they've all started sort of sprouting up there so it's great to see them poking their heads up because it took a wee while before the before they showed up but I'm glad they are there now and moving along to the next one we've got the leeks I think some of these are almost done some of them have started flowering they've been in there over winter they've been in there a long time so I've already started picking a couple of them and eating them they're not maybe as big or as fat as I'd like them to be but you know there's still plenty of eating in them moving on here some of our more sort of salady kind of crops I guess I'd say that we have on the go here so we've got the beetroot at the back in a couple of rows there and we've got spring onions at the front here these I, I maybe put these out a little bit on the small side when I put them out to begin with and they, they got attacked by slugs and things and I was a bit worried they weren't going to survive but they've absolutely sprung into life recently because it's been rain and sun rain and sun rain and sun so they sprung into life nice big strong plants now and they should go on to survive pretty nicely moving on to this bed here we've got the shallots hopefully you can see there through the cover because if you lift the cover off and try to put it back on it's a nightmare because all the green bits spring out and it's a pain to get them all tucked back in again like the garlic the shallots have been out all the way through the winter and they're looking absolutely brilliant and hopefully again another couple of months and they should be ready to come out of there moving on here this is one of the main salad beds this bit looks like a bit of a mess and it kind of is it's pak choy that we, we grew during the spring and we've had quite a few pickings of it and it and it looks great but pak choy doesn't like the sun it doesn't like warm weather so it's all boated you can see that the flowers have come on it but again the cover's blown off and the flowers are there but i'm leaving them because again those bees and pollinators are going to come along they're going to absolutely love it then again in the next couple of weeks as soon as something else is ready these will come out and new crops will go in there and speaking of new crops we've got a couple of rows of lettuce at the back here oh let's, let's just take this clip off actually and have a look under the cover it'll be easy to see there you go so again I, I was a little bit worried that I'd put them in too small but they've, they've taken off they're going great guns now there's a, a few different varieties in there there's Lolo Rosso there's Canasta there's some little gems there's some of the Cosmic Crimson Crush, I think it was, that we got from America. And there's one of the, the name evades me and I can't see the little label. There it is. Oh, that's Cosmic Crimson on the end there, that, that sort of ready coloured one. So it's looking good in there anyway. So the lettuce should be ready soon enough. And let's have a, a little wander over here. Don't worry, we're nearly done. We're nearly finished. We're nearly at the end. We've got the broad beans here growing up the the frames these were the new frames that we put in this year that we got from Wilco's and they're going absolutely fine I was a little bit worried about the broad beans because they got attacked by the pigeons to begin with but they seem to have recovered and you can see them there now that they're, they're starting to get a little bit tall they've got flowers on them and stuff like that so they're recovering nicely then maybe it's not as far on as I would like them to be for this time of year but you know I'm still hopeful we'll get a great crop from them albeit a little bit later than we wanted peas over here these are all sugar snap peas along here me and peas have a love hate relationship i love eating the peas and peas hate growing for me they're all a bit tangled at the moment so i think when i'm up here at the weekend we'll get them untangled and sorted out of all these strings and be looking a lot better there's nothing growing on the other side of this frame just yet but we've got some french beans in at the moment at home they've only just sprouted so again it'll be a few weeks before they're out and going strong quick very quick look over here this is the leaf mold not doing much at the moment again that's going to take absolutely ages before it breaks down this area here it's a bit of a mess let's be honest this is where the flower bed's going to be again over the next week i reckon i'll get to work on this the soil all needs turned over and tilled we need to get the weeds out and stuff like that but it'll not take too much it'll be looking absolutely brilliant i've bought some bedding plants to use and grown some flowers as well but i don't have the capacity to grow all the fruit and veg at once and flowers so we bought some bedding plants we've grown some we'll put a mix in and hopefully once it's all sorted that'll be looking absolutely fab here's something new that i never showed you on camera let me just pull back a little bit we've got our new arch in here and we've got the sweet peas growing up them much like the, the sugar snap peas the sweet peas are in a little bit of a little bit of a tangled mess at the moment um so i need to sort them out you can see them there that they're, they're grown okay but they look a bit sad because they're all tangled up but we're doing a bit of ex an experiment with these so on this side these ones are planted in the ground 
and on this side you can see we've got them planted in a sort of trough like planter so we're going to see which one grows best we have a bit of a competition and then next year when we do it whichever one grew best we'll do that on both sides of the of the arch over here the strawberries strawberries looking brilliant look at the flowers on them we've got two different types in here again these these are a few years old so i wish i could remember the, the variety there's definitely some marshmallow ones in there I think they're the white flower ones, but I can't quite remember what the other ones are. But yeah, lovely pink flowers on these ones. Loads of lovely white flowers on these ones. And I don't know if you remember from when I did the video about sort of revamping this strawberry bed again with this method of growing it through the weed fabric. Some of these are sort of two to three year old strawberry plants, which is why some of them are a lot bigger and more flowers than others. And some of them like that little one over there. This is a, they were runners that were taken off of the plants. So this is their first year. So they're going to take a lot more time to come on and grow up just like the rest of them. And last but not least, I think we're just about at the end here. We've got the two blueberry bushes and these were put in brand new last year. So we didn't get anything off them last year and they got attacked by the rabbit that managed to get into the plot. So they had a bit of a hard life, but I'm pleased to say that they're looking really good this year. I mean, this is only sort of the first year of them grown properly. And we've got loads of little flowers on them over here. Even more on this one over here. So I'm hopeful of getting a pretty decent crop of blueberries this year. With a bit of luck. But, you know, there's only one way to find out, I guess. And that is to consider subscribing. It's absolutely free. Just think about it, it's free. What else do you get for free in life these days? All you have to do is click the button below and that's it done. And if you want to know when we put out a new video, you just click the little bell notification thing next to it and you'll get a little message pops up whenever a new thing pops out. Anyway, that's me just about done for today. You've seen the plot, warts and all the good areas, the bad areas. There's a couple of bits and pieces that they need working on, like the far end there next to the polytunnel where we're going to put the pond in, the sweet corn and some i've got some squash actually to go in there as well we've got some honey nut squash i think it's called and there's a, a boston marrow as well so we'll we'll do the almost like the three sisters sort of technique and grow them in amongst the sweet corn that'll be coming in the next few weeks so if you want to see that please think about watching that but i think i think i'm done i'm done for the day because i can feel spots of rain and again if we turn around that way and have a look up there it's looking pretty ropey but that is me done for the day thank you very much for watching once again folks and i'll hope you see you on the next one bye for now